We have all been ghosted by leads before and TBH, it does not feel good. You get excited to work with them. They seem like a perfect fit for your business. They may have even responded to your first email with enthusiasm when you send over your service deck and then crickets. It's definitely not ideal, but it happens to us all, of course. But the truth is, people get busy and they forget. People will have a moment of being like, I need support with this specific thing, the service that you offer, and they may inquire with you, they may inquire with multiple people, and then they get sucked back into all the day-to-day -day things within their business, and it's not top priority. So instead of being bummed about this and the reality of a business owner, instead, let's think, what can we do about this? So this video, I wanna talk about how how to create a seamless lead follow-up process with HoneyBook. Hey there, my name's Christy. I'm the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life and a HoneyBook Pro. I help people map out their client flows and I've also mapped out my client flow in HoneyBook to be able to create a really great lead process to make sure I am nurturing every single person that comes through our doors. And if they decide ultimately that we're not the right fit or it's not the right time for them, then we've done everything we possibly can. So in this video, I just wanna bring some clarity to what a lead process can look like. Kind of walk you through a little bit of our client flow mapping process and how we talk with our clients about how do you want your lead follow-up to look? Do you want these to be automated? Do you want to insert personal notes, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into how to create a seamless lead follow-up process in HoneyBook. Okay, so let's go through our leads process. So this is our actual HoneyBook inquiry pipeline that I'm gonna guide you through. So I'm gonna guide you through exactly what we do and how we walk our clients through this process as well. But first I wanna point out, you can see here how the emails are um, named. We actually have a naming convention that makes it so easy not only to find the emails we're looking for, but also as we're setting up these automations. So you could see HB inquiry 00, zero. the one attached to this brochure is 01, the follow-ups are 02, 3, 4, etc. So not only are we obsessed with systems like HoneyBook and ClickUp, but also systems are so much more than just the software. It's also creating systems within the softwares that make your life so much easier. So you could see in our template section in these emails how we have these naming conventions and everything is numbered so then it shows up by the category of what pipeline it is and then the number that the sequence falls into. Okay, so as we are mapping out this process with our clients and our students, the first thing we ask them is, okay, so your lead inquires, they fill out your lead form, what do you want to happen next? Some people immediately want to send a booking form. Some people immediately want to send a pricing guide. Some people want to get them on a call and give them no information. And this is completely up to you and it's completely preference. So I'll show you what we do, but those are the type of things that we ask to get the wheels turning. Okay, do you wanna pre-qualify the leads? Do you wanna give them the information they want right away? Do you wanna get them on a sales call? So what we do is we send an autoresponder saying, hey, thanks for reaching out to work with us on your HoneyBook project, ClickUp project, et cetera. We received your inquiry and we'll respond within the next 48 business hours. We are actually going to come in and tweak this process a little bit and change this to 24 business hours. We typically try to respond within like an hour or by the end of the day, but sometimes things happen, right? So it gives yourself a nice little buffer while telling the person like, hey, we received it, we're on it, hang tight for a sec. So as I say that too about us going to revamp our process, know that this is all trial and error, right? You set things up and then you tweak them and you change them and you audit your systems every so often. Like we'll do a full audit at the end of this year and we'll do them throughout the year as well, but it's Q4 already, which is crazy. And so we will do audits and say, okay, what has been working? What do we have to change in terms of our sales process, our leads process, our team, internal operations, et cetera. So those are just some bonus tips 
there for you. But you can see as soon as a lead inquires zero days after this automation is activated, it does not require approve before sending. We're just going to go ahead and send that autoresponder. Now, how does this automation actually trigger? When we set this up in the tools automation section, you can see that this is triggered by the contact form if someone says they're interested in HoneyBook setup, right? So if we go to our website and go to the contact form, you will see that if someone fills this out, and if I scroll a second and they say, what type of project are you looking for? And they put HoneyBook setup. If I come to the back end of my lead form, let me actually come into this one and my contact form, this general contact form, this, hold on, oh, this is ClickUp Consulting, hold on. In contact forms and the default contact form, what type of project are you looking for? This is linked to the project type which then is linked to the automation trigger. Now, another thing that you can do is we actually have just a HoneyBook one. So just the HoneyBook Pros contact form. So what we do at this one, instead of asking them what type of project are you looking for, because we know they're interested in something related to HoneyBook, in the settings, we actually assign the project type, the HoneyBook setup. So this will always trigger the HoneyBook inquiry automation. So if you don't want the lead to say, okay, here's what I'm interested in, but you wanna have a specific contact form for each service, that's how you can also trigger that automation. So just some fun facts for you there in the tech aspect of setting up this automation. So whenever someone fills out our contact form or fills out the HoneyBook Pros form and says, hey, I'm interested in HoneyBook setup, that will send out. Then we will go ahead and pre-qualify the lead. So we'll go ahead and look at their responses and say, okay, is are we interested in sending more information to this person and typically if they're saying i would say 80 percent of the people are interested in a full build but some people will be like i'm just interested in a strategy session or want to get more information about another thing um and that's when we will just send them the information about that thing but like i said 80 percent of the time we're going ahead and we're approving sending over this custom HoneyBook build brochure. So in this brochure, it has about our service, pricing, info, a scheduler, right? And then this is what is set to needs approval because we like to insert a personal message in here and say, you know, oh, we love working with photographers. Oh, we're from New York too. You know, whatever, we wanna put in something personal so they know that we read their inquiry and we're giving that personal touch, right? So you can see I've attached our brochure. Feel free to book a Zoom or a phone consult. Let me know if you have any questions. And then our brochure is linked at the bottom. So this is approved before sending. So we can go ahead and add that personal note and then just send it over. So let me actually show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's my trusty old John Smith project. So you can see when someone fills out the information, then you'll be able to come into the project and see the information that they submitted and get more information about their business. Now, this is full of test stuff, but what would happen next is you'll see that once John inquired, then it sent the autoresponder. And then if I go ahead and refresh this, you will see that now that brochure is waiting for me, right? So all I have to do is click view slash edit and say, um, we would love to work with you to help you enhance your consulting business with HB, right? So you go ahead, insert that personal note, and then just go ahead and send that over. And that is how easy sending the brochure is while still having that personal touch. 
So now what happens is after you send the brochure, some people may book a call right away, right? And if they do book a call, we have a thing in here that immediately after the Zoom consult or phone consult is scheduled, it creates a task to move the stage to booked call and delete automation. So what we'll do then is come up here, we'll say, okay, John Smith booked his call, and then I'll go ahead and delete the automation so none of the follow-ups trigger. Now, all of our follow-up emails are approved before sending because HoneyBook does not know if they have responded and said, oh, I'm not interested, it's out of budget, et cetera, I need to wait until Q1, et cetera, et cetera. So we wanna make sure that we physically click this button. But what you'll see is if I come into John Smith and I refresh this, you'll see that the next follow-up is going to be waiting there for me, but it's going to tell me, okay, tomorrow. So say tomorrow arrives and this says, okay, it's due today. We want to follow up with John Smith. All of this is all going to be in my task section as well um, in the home screen. And so all I have to do is come into John Smith's project, say, did he view the brochure? Did he read the email yet? Not yet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and approve this email, send it, and then it's going to send through his portal. And so you will see that is how easy it is to have these follow-ups nurture your lead. See, hey, John, just want to follow up to see if you had a chance to review the brochure. It's just bumping it up to the top of their inbox. So what is these... Uh what does our process actually look like? So we go ahead, they get the autoresponder, we decide if we wanna send them the brochure or something else, or if it's not a good fit. 24 hours later, one day later, we have follow-up number one. Remember, these are all approved before sending, and you could see 24 hours after the previous step is complete. Three days after the first follow-up, then we send follow-up number two. This one is a little bit short and sweet. So any thoughts, re HoneyBook project? Are you still looking for HoneyBook support or have you gone another direction? If you're still interested, feel free to book a consult call here. So that's three days later. And then seven days after that, we give them a little bit of week buffer to think about it. And then we trigger follow-up number three which is, we say, wishing you the best. This actually gets a lot of people because they'll be like, wait, hold on, I'm still interested because it's kind of like, okay, see you later. And I'll just say, I just want to check in one last time. If our services are out of budget, we also have other options. If I don't hear from you, I'll assume you went in another direction. But if you're still interested, feel free to book a call here to chat, wishing you all the best. So we're kind of closing the door temporarily. Now, we used to stop there until we realized, especially being on directories like HoneyBook Pros and ClickUp Consultants, they're amazing, right? Because we get so many leads, but a lot of people are price shopping. And a lot of people will come in this frantic state of, I need help. They'll inquire with a ton of different people or even just one, and then they'll forget about it, right? They kind of leave that state of frantic and they will then kind of get themselves together, see if they can um, help themselves and learn a couple things, and then they'll kind of forget about it, right? So instead of just leaving them there, we actually added in a three month follow up and a six month follow up. This is just kind of like, hey, did you ever get that support you were looking for? Just a reminder, we're here if you need anything. So you can see we will then move the lead to a three month follow up and six month follow up where we will have the buckets of those people. So we can see how many people are in each category. And what these look like are Hey, it's been a few months since you inquired to work with us. Did you end up getting the HoneyBook support you needed? We're always here to help. And then if we still don't hear back, six months, we'll say, just touching base. If you ever got the help you inquired about, here we'll insert another personal note just so they know like, hey, this isn't a robot. We're actually checking in on you. Um, so like, hey, did you ever get help with automations or enhancing your client experience, whatever their initial pain point was, and then say you can schedule a call. And then we also want to leave them a few extra resources. So subscribe to our channel, follow along on Instagram, the blog, and then check out our HoneyBook course. After six months, we will close the door if we have not heard back from them, and then we will archive the project. So you can see 
we have quite a few follow-ups, right? And we're really making sure that we nurture that lead as much as possible. So at the end of the day, we know that we did our best. But the best part about this is we may have 15, 20 leads to check in on. Not brand new leads, right? But leads that are three months in, seven days in, et cetera, when all these things are tr are triggering. And because we have HoneyBook Automation set up, it takes us about five to 10 minutes a day tops. That's between leads and current clients. Because we also have pipelines like this for our current clients who we're onboarding, for ones we're checking in, who we've wrapped up their project and they're in the support phase saying, hey, it's been seven, um, seven days since our HoneyBook final training. How are things going? And so because we have this all set in, up in HoneyBook, you saw how easy it was right here. Just the click of a button. You can go ahead and approve it, or you can view and edit it, add a personal note, and then send it over. So I hope this was enlightening and it helped you realize the power of HoneyBook Automations and building your lead follow-up process in here, and then kind of going through the process of how we work with our clients and students, asking those questions about, you know, what do you want to happen when, how many follow-up emails do you want, how far apart do you want them? And then what do you want to include them? Do you want resources, short and sweet, add some testimonials? And we'll really deck out this process unique to them and their business. So I hope that video was helpful for you and brought life to what your lead process could even look like and how easy it is to map it out in HoneyBook. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can see all of the HoneyBook tutorials and the ones coming down the pipeline. And if you're ready to dive right in to all of the resources that you need to build out your client flow in HoneyBook, all the questions that you may have and support from me and my team, make sure to check out our system school honeybook course it has 50 plus video tutorials templates that you could plug right in client flow mapping strategies literally everything you need to diy your honeybook setup not to mention you also get three months of included community access where we have our exclusive system school community we're helping them on a daily basis in our group chats and then also having monthly live calls and q a's so i will link that in the description below make sure to check it out and with that again Again, thank you for being here, for watching our video, supporting our channel. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.